My brother and I were born and raised in Western Montana. We're very aware that when most people think about Western Montana, they think about visiting Glacier National Park. So my brother and I set out with a goal on this trip to share some of our favorite parts of Western Montana with you. So maybe you think a little bit different about Glacier Country. Hello, beautiful people. If you're new here, my name is Amanda Zitto. This is my brother, Gary. We are in Western Montana. We're actually in my family's ranch right now. Last year, I convinced my lovely brother to do a tour of Oregon with me in May. On that trip, we got, we got rained on. A little, a little bit. We were like, maybe next time we do this kind of trip, we would do it in like June. Well, it's a year later, it is May, and we're gonna do a tour of Western Montana in 46 degrees. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, the weather looks like it's gonna rain on us quite a bit again. It'll be fine. We learned nothing. Are you ready? <laughs> Thanks to the wonderful people over at Honda America, I will be riding the 2022 Africa Twin Adventure Sports DCT for this trip, and my brother will be riding his very trusty Suzuki V-Strom 650. Thanks to the sponsor of today's video, Revzilla, I was able to upgrade my gear, and this is the first trip where I break in my new Revit Sand 4 H2O jacket and pants, and for the first time in six years, I have new boots, the Forma Terra Evo Dry X series. All of my gear will be linked in the description. Highway 200 is a scenic route in Montana that falls along the banks of the Clark Fork River. Small towns like Thompson Falls are dotted all along the route. But the mountains and forests that frame the road along the river make this a fantastic ride on a motorcycle. There are hot springs, the bison range, the garden of a thousand Buddhas, and a lot of great fishing. After visiting with family, we ran into a little bit of rain. Okay, a lot of rain. But the Yak Valley is known as Montana's only rainforest. The precipitation, number of cloudy days, and deep winter snowpack create a modified Pacific maritime climate that supports small pockets of rare inland temperate rainforest, dominated by western red cedar and western hemlock. The Yak has approximately 180,000 acres of undisturbed roadless areas. Ross Creek Cedars is a 100-acre grove of giant western red cedars, some of which are 8 to 12 feet in diameter. There's a self-guided nature trail that's less than a mile through the groves. Some of these trees are 500 years old. We had our minds on getting to our destination and out of the rain. But it's worth a stop, especially in warmer months, because the trail is shaded by the 175 feet tall trees. Along US Highway 2 is Yak Falls. During the spring and early summer, the snowmelt creates a spectacle you will want to stop and see. Yak is the furthest northwest town in the state and is home to roughly 300 people. So the amenities are few, but we didn't have any problems finding something to eat, and we knew exactly where we were going to get chai in the morning, which was nice because I need my caffeine in the mornings. We have officially made it to Yak. I found this 
cute, cute hot tent on hip camp. I will leave it linked down in the description. Our host greeted us when we got here. The wood for the fire is actually included when you book the stay. So we're going to be so toasty warm tonight, which I'm very excited about because I think the last time I checked the temperature, it's 46 degrees right now. It's a little bit chilly. We got a little bit of a downpour on the way here, <laughs> but we knew that that would happen. We were prepared. Yes. Yes. Says my brother who has soaked hoodie right now. <laughs> <laughs> just the hood. Just the, mm, just the hood. <laughs> right now we're going to head to the tavern and find some food. And then we're going to come back and start that fireplace and get it nice and toasty in there. When I came here in 2016 on the pilgrimage, I stopped in this little town and I had a burger at that little restaurant right there. It's called the Dirty Shame Saloon. And I dragged my brother up to Yak specifically so we could have fries at the Dirty Shame, Dirty Shame Saloon because I have been dreaming about them for literally years. But unfortunately, it looks like they're shut down. It's very sad. It's a dirty shame. <laughs> <laughs> but fortunate for us, there is other food here in Yak. It is a very tiny town. If you choose to come up here, be aware. Small town. <laughs> but the Yak River Tavern is open and we're going to see what kind of food they've got. How was your burger, brother? It was delicious. It was very good. It was good food. I had the chili. There was like proper chunks of brisket and vegetables in it. Mm. You know when you go to a cafe and you don't know when you order the chili, if it's just gonna be doctored canned chili or if it's gonna be actually homemade, but that was actually homemade. It was, it was for real real. It was for real real. <laughs> <laughs> Good morning, beautiful people. We had a very cozy night's sleep here at the Shameless Oasis in the hot tent, as we've been calling it. I think it's actually called a cabin tent. Probably. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm so grateful that we stayed here at this little tent with a wood stove in it, rather than going to a hotel last night, because we were able to dry out our stuff. Yeah, it worked out much better. Yeah. <laughs> it's kind of hard to dry out stuff in the hotel. Yeah. If you guys ever make it up to Northwest Montana, this place was so cool. It was pretty awesome. Yeah. And like, and even if you don't stay in the cabin tent, they, the camping is very cheap here. Yeah. There's showers. And there's coffee. And there's coffee. I didn't even realize the, co like the, the gal who runs this place also runs a little coffee shack here in Yak. There's like all of about three businesses here in Yak. <laughs> also, for the record, I did not make brother sleep on the floor. He chose to sleep on the floor. I had to test out the new air mattress. I gave my old sleeping mat to brother, the one that I used last season, which is still like a super high R value. It's, it's literally- It was very warm. Yeah, I think it's j literally just like the model year older than the one that I have. Yeah, I said very warm. The goal today is to ride down Lake Kukunusa, and I think we're gonna stay in Libby today is the goal. We're trying to keep our mileage pretty low so that we can enjoy some stuff, but we need to get packing because I'm sure that she doesn't want us here all day. <laughs> <laughs> Probably not. I don't think so. We'll pack it, get everything cleaned up in the cabin because right now it's a little bit of a disaster zone. Mm, yeah. Um, we spread everything out. We moved stuff around trying to get everything dried out last night. So, <laughs> brother's gloves are still not dry. <laughs> no. <laughs> Alrighty, I think that we're all packed up and we have to leave now. Lake Kukanusa is calling our name. It's gonna be so pretty. You haven't ridden it yet. No, it's been up there. Oh, I'm so excited. <laughs> Alrighty, let's do this.
Hey, brother. Hmm. There's some snow. Is that what that is? <laughs> <laughs> Nope. Nope. Mm -hmm. It just gets worse. Mm -hmm. Well, we tried. Mm. <sighs> well, we thought that we were going to go this way. We have hit an obstacle that I don't really want to go over with a bike that's not mine. <laughs> <laughs> and also, Gary set a rule before we started that uh, if we hit snow, it's a no-go. It's not happening. No, no, no. Which is fair. It's fair. <laughs> So I guess we're going to backtrack all the way to Yak and then take a different road to Libby and uh, we'll make a different plan from there. No Lake Cucanusa today. This is hanging out down here. That's the one I seen earlier. Black bears and grizzly bears are found in the mountains of northwest Montana, with black bears being much more common. Although an encounter with a grizzly bear is possible, especially in remote wilderness areas, it is unlikely. Black bears are not as aggressive as grizzly bears and most often tend to want to avoid humans. Northwest Montana has the largest concentration of grizzlies in the lower 48 states, with more than 1,000 bears across Glacier National Park and nearby expanses of forested wilderness in an area known as the Northern Continental Divide ecosystem. If you do plan to spend time up here, it is recommended that you carry bear spray with you and know how to use it. I will leave more information about camping in bear active areas in a link in the description. Libby is the gateway to Lake Cucanusa, which is also known as the City of Eagles, which explains all the sculptures we found. We were lucky enough to find a room at the Evergreen Motel, which was filled with furniture that was made of salvage materials by the owners during their remodel. A little bit disappointed we couldn't get all the way over that pass to Lake Cucanusa, but that's okay. The road that we ended up riding from Yak to here was actually pretty good. I had a good time. It was a good road. We are right across the street from where I want us to have dinner because I've heard very good things. We're going to ha have a little break, maybe make ourselves uh, presentable so we don't look like we are dirty bikers. That's no fun. <laughs> After we got set up in our room, we walked across the street to the Blackboard Bistro, one of the best rated restaurants in Libby. Just finished up our dinner well, here in Libby, and oh my god, like it's a little spendy, but oh, that food was, was so it. good. It was so good. <laughs> uh, I had lobster and the shrimp. Uh, what is that? Catalana. Catalana. Yes. And brother had pasta romana. Pasta romana. Mm. Yeah, it was very good. And like we had. Excellent salads. I don't think I've enjoyed a salad that was that good for a while. <laughs> oh yeah, the prawns. The, the, we had the prawns. With the, the peanut sauce. Yes, that was also very, was very good. good. I want that peanut sauce and like some noodles. Mmm, yes, right. yes. And now I am so stuffed. <laughs> I 
And it was almost okay that we skipped lunch because we needed the room <laughs> to eat all of that food. A lot of food. But now we're gonna take a little walk down Libby, down downtown Libby, down Libby, down Libby, <laughs> down downtown Libby, uh, to try to walk off some of the full belly. <laughs> Well, we had a nice little walk around downtown Libby. We saw the sights. We did the walk. I don't know how many eagles we found, but we found out when we got back here, I was reading a little binder. There's like 37 eagles around Libby. <laughs> huge, huge shout out to my patrons on Patreon who make these videos possible. I wouldn't be able to do this without you. If you would like to support the channel for as little as $1 a month, you can support me over on Patreon and get early access to videos like these ad-free before the rest of the world. If that's not up your alley, that is totally okay. I appreciate you guys just for being here every single week and watching these videos. Question for the end screen crew. Have you ridden through snow? <laughs> Have you ridden through snow? <laughs> okay, question for the end screen crew. <laughs> Have you ridden through the snow? All right, we'll see you guys later. <laughs> Hey brother, I think it's a little wet. A little bit. A little bit. If I have to off the camera in my pajamas, then you do too. Except your clothes are all your clothes. Always. Your clothes is your every, every, every <laughs> all the time clothes. It's my everything. Uh, TikTok are all wet now. <laughs>